Last Saturday was Human Rights Day for Burma, and the Burmese American community in the Bay, San Francisco Bay Area held a rally to fight for human rights in Burma and in Ukraine. One of the speakers. Uh, was my name is Cheryl Zor. I am a retired industrial Cheryl electrician Zor. and former president of Ask Me Local 444 and a supporter of OaklandSocialist.com. We are here today to stand for human rights from Burma to Ukraine and around the world. Burma and Ukraine have a lot in common. In one way or another, since 1962, the Burmese people have lived under and struggled against military control of their government. The military enriches itself at the cost of the majority. Ukraine became independent from the Soviet Union in 1991, but has struggled to eliminate the oligarch class, which is completely corrupt, controls politics, and loots the resources of the nation. The people of both countries understandably seek to establish Western-style democracy. But we have to be honest about democracy under capitalism and ask ourselves if democracy, politically and economically, is possible in a market economy where everything, including justice, is determined by how much money you have. We cannot find a way to permanently end military rule in Burma or the oligarch class in Ukraine unless we look at what is happening in the world as a whole and why. We are living in a time where one crisis rolls into the next without any kind of long-term solution or any means of preventing another. It feels like we and the entire planet are in free fall. The COVID-19 pandemic was caused by factory farming of animals for food production and deforestation, driven by profits. The genocide against people of color, like the murder of George Floyd, continues. Under the military coup in Burma, the elected government of Aung San Suu Kyi was arrested. Since that time, security forces have killed protesters, carried out torture, sexual abuse, rape, and mass political detentions. In Syria, Assad carried out a genocide against his own people, assisted by Putin with chemical weapons. When each of these epic crises arises, Many people think when this is over, we can go back to normal life, except that normal life under capitalism means the ongoing destruction of the environment, the absolute crises of climate change, inequality, poverty, homelessness, and injustice. Many people would like to believe that Western-style democracy can resolve these crises. The United States brands itself as the democracy to emulate. But the United States was founded on genocide against Native American peoples and enslavement of African Americans. And under Democratic and Republican administrations alike, there was a long history of crimes against humanity from Vietnam to the wars in the Middle East. Capitalism, the economic system that has dominated the world, is in decline and cannot resolve its crises. If we want to change the world, we cannot pretend that a capitalist or big business political party is the answer. Political parties such as the Democrats with the help of union leaders have gotten us exactly where we are today. I was active in two unions. There is a lot of pressure on union activists to simply go along to get along. While I didn't, many others did and do. The consequences for workers has been the loss of decent contracts with livable wages and benefits, the loss of rights on the job, and the demise of unions, period. It's also caused enormous confusion, including many workers actually supporting Trump. Yes, we're going to vote for Trump 2024. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The lack of democratic debate in the labor movement. Oh, uh, just one more comment. You may have noticed that in the parade today, all of the major unions of San Francisco participated for St. Patrick's Day, but they're not here fighting with us for justice and democracy and for a better life for everybody. The unions have to completely change their structure. Right. The lack of democratic debate in our movement damages social movements and prevents them from becoming what they need to be, a united movement of working class people who can ultimately take power from the dictators and billionaires of the world and bring about peace. As long as we live in a world where imperialist powers such as the U.S., China, and Russia
Russia jockey for control and expansion. There will be war. Many admire Aung San Suu Kyi and the National League for Democracy and Volodymyr Zelensky for their courage. But courage is not enough. What is their face in society? Aung San Suu Kyi hopes to win over the military junta and other sectors of society to democratic values, but remain silent when atrocities were committed against the Rohingyas and other ethnic minorities. Prior to Russia's invasion of Ukraine, Zelensky's approval rating was falling because he hoped to find some way of reconciling with the oligarchs and corrupt politicians he was elected to fight. The military in Burma must be brought down. Putin must be brought down. But who and what will replace them? With what guarantees that history will not repeat itself with civil war and atrocities? What is missing here and around the world is an independent voice and movement of the working class. The independence of the military class is the rich. What is missing is our own voice, our own organization, and our own party. We know that workers here in the Bay Area who come from all of, all, all of these countries and more. We are in a powerful position to start to build an international working class movement, a movement which includes a discussion of how to end this disastrous system and build real, genuine socialist democracy. And in that way, our struggles will not be in vain.